We are here today worshiping you. And this morning I give you my worship, Jesus. We place you in the center of our life now. Yes, God. In this moment, we will have a prayer partners come up for whoever is in need of prayer, whoever is in need of just getting back to that connection with God, getting back to just talking to God one more time and just surrender everything to Him. This morning we're going to declare with our mouths, Jesus, you are the center. It's not me anymore. I'm not the center, but you will be the center of everything, God. Amen. Someone say, Jesus, be the center of it all.
be dismissed to Children's Church and the nursery is open and we will have our announcements. Thank you. God bless you. Good morning, Dayspring. The beautiful and faithful women's ministry of Dayspring is having a potluck gathering at the church this Wednesday at 7 p.m. If you'd like to attend, please contact Sister Michelle for more details. There will be food and fellowship that will strengthen your faith and build relationships among our women. Ladies, please don't miss it. On July 17th, we will be having our first senior home visits at the Parson House Cypress. It is on Eldridge near the church. We will be visiting them once a month to spend time with them and honor their lives. You may contact Sister Hilda or Brother Steve if you have any other questions regarding this important ministry. There is a sign-up sheet on the back table if you would like to go and share the love of God with our elderly neighbors. Hebrews 13, 16 says, Do not neglect to do good and to share what you have, for such sacrifices are pleasing to God. As a believer, we are commanded to get baptized in water as a symbol of our faith and forgiveness. On July 18th, we will have water baptisms at church. Be like heaven, be courageous, and show the community to believe that Jesus is our Savior. Get baptized in water for the first time or if you are dedicating your life again. The Bible says all you need to do is believe with all your heart that Jesus is the Son of God and you can get baptized. Our online store is ready to take orders. We are raising money for our church, so please support our efforts. Shirts, coffee mugs, and other exciting items will be added regularly, so keep checking back each week. Please order and pay from our website only. Thank you so much for all your support. Are you ready to share the gospel? The Bible says, today is the day of salvation. So let's all take our phones out right now and go to our church Facebook page to share the Sunday Life service with all our friends. Let's do our part to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. You never know who will give their life to Jesus today. Click like and comment, amen, then share it. Please keep liking, commenting, and sharing all of our social media posts. Let's get the word out that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Your tithes and offerings are at work here at Dayspring. Giving tithes is a commandment God's word gives us to honor him and help the church. Every dollar given matters and helps us to spread the gospel to the lost and help those in need. We thank you for your support and for partnering with us to spread the love of Jesus. Don't forget, immediately after this service, we will be making our big announcement about the future of Dayspring and where God is taking us. Jesus loves you and so do we. Have a blessed week. Hello, everybody. All right. Good morning. Thanks for joining us. Thank you for all of our uh, family and friends who are joining us online through social media. Look to your neighbor and say, Jesus loves you, and so do I. Wow. In case you hadn't been told you're in, somebody loves you today. Also, I want to tell you something. You are in store for greater things. Amen. Amen. Now look to your neighbor and say, you're in store for greater things. It's part of your fellowship, right? So you fellowshiped with other people today now. <laughs> All right. Praise God. I am so excited about today, man. I'm so thankful that the Lord has given us a place to worship, a place to uh, join together, to come and praise his mighty name and to share the word with you guys. We love the fellowship that comes from church. I love this church. Thank you, Lord, for allowing me to pastor this church. So are you guys expecting something today? 
Is your heart and your mind ready to receive a message from God today? I hope so, because I believe I have one for you guys today. So thank you, Lord, for doing this and bringing us all together again. So um, we're going to start a brand new series today titled simply The Church. The Church. So we're going to be talking about The Church for the next couple of weeks. And today the title of the message is, Why Are We Here? Have you ever asked that question? Man, why am I here? You might say, why am I here in this world? Why am I here at this job? Why am I here at this church? Why am I here in this whatever? But have you ever asked that question, why am I here? Have you ever asked the question, well, why is the church here? I've asked that question to myself many times. And that's what we're going to get into today. Why is the church here? When I say, why are you here, do you realize that you are the church? It's not just the building. It's the people, right? The building is the temple that we meet in. The people are the church. So why is the church here? It's real simple. Jesus tells us. In Matthew 28, 18 through 20, he tells us the purpose of the church, the reason that we're here is to fulfill the Great Commission. And this is what a faithful church does. Jesus came and told his disciples, this is before he ascended into heaven, I have, given, I have been given all authority in heaven and on earth. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Teach these new disciples to obey all the commands I have given you and be sure of this, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Go and make disciples in all nations, right? It starts at home. It absolutely does. Right where you are, in your home, in your community, in your church, in your city, in your state, and in the world, through all nations. Now, he tells us this because we can do it. Jesus already came. He's not going to do it again until he comes to take us with him. So right now, we are the hands and feet of the Lord. Look to your neighbor and say, you are Jesus' hands and feet. So that means that we are supposed to go and share the gospel and take the message of salvation to all people who don't have it or to people who've forgotten it. And then we are to use our hands to work in service to God to do these things. These hands and these feet show that we love God. These hands and these feet take the love of God to other people. Can I get an amen? Are you with me on this? Amen. If you're with me on social media with this today, this is what God has given you these abilities to do and these gifts. What does a church do? So why is a church important? Why is a church here? The church brings all people of all backgrounds together. The church is full of people with different talents. In case you hadn't noticed, there's not everybody can come up here and sing the way our great praise and worship Music, uh, musicians sing and play. We can't do that, right? Not everybody can. Not everybody can greet the way that our greeters greet. Not everybody can teach the way that our teachers teach. Not everybody can preach the way that our preachers preach. Not everybody can do the things that are inside of this church. You guys all have talent. God has brought that together in the church for a reason, and that's to fulfill the Great Commission. The church brings people together to train them. It gives the church, it gives the people opportunities to go out and do ministry. It also supports them and gives them a place to come together to do a great work. The the God that I serve and that we all serve here is great. Can I get an amen if you agree? Do you agree that he is great? Can I get an amen if you agree he's great? And so if our God is great and his Holy Spirit lives inside of you, then that means that there is greatness inside of you. Has that greatness come out yet? Today's the day, brothers and sisters, for that greatness to come out. Today's the day that we're going to start talking about how there are greater days ahead of us, but it starts today. Amen? Amen. When a church comes together and when a church evangelizes, that means they take the gospel out. When a church worships together, when it makes disciples, when it does ministry and has fellowship, then the people within the church find their purpose in life. What am I doing? What does God want me to do? Why was I created? If you start doing all of these things here as part of the church, the bigger fellowship, you will find your purpose in life. I was doing these things. I didn't have this vision to become a pastor when I was a kid. I wanted to be a fireman. That was what I wanted to be. And then I wanted to be a middle linebacker for the Dallas Cowboys. Nowhere in either one of those two is pastor talking about God. Nowhere. 
But when I was serving and doing ministry and hearing the word preached and I was worshiping God and learning and getting close to him, he then revealed to me that the reason I created you, Peter, was to be a pastor. And guys, I love it more than I ever thought I would. <laughs> Praise God. It is the hardest thing I've ever done, but it's also the most rewarding and fulfilling thing next to being married to my wife and raising my kids. It is the most rewarding and most filling thing ever for me. I never thought that, ever. So what about you? You may be asking today, man, what is my purpose in life? Man, God gives it to you right here. You follow him. You come to church. You fellowship. You do ministry. You serve. You worship him. And you tell other people what he's done in your life, and you will discover your purpose. Now, people say, well, I can do that alone. I don't need a church to do it. No, yes, you do. You can get to know God by yourself, but as soon as you do that, you become part of a big family of believers. And spiritually, you want to be around your brothers and sisters. So when somebody says that, they truly haven't given their life to the Lord. He is not truly their father because inside of you, it's going to be, man, I got to be around my brothers and sisters. I don't know why. I really don't like those people very much. We don't really get along all that much. Let me, let me rephrase that. I don't want to say this. Not that I don't like them. It's not that. I don't like what they do so much, maybe, and I don't agree with this. Maybe they're this politics, and I'm that, or I like this type of food, and they don't, and, uh, but it doesn't matter. You're going to be like, man, but I want to see them anyway. I want to see how they're doing. I want to see, can I pour into their lives? Can I pray for them, or can they pray for me? Because maybe I need it. See, that's what the church comes together to do. And how then can we go out and visit these senior homes? How can we go out and help the orphans? How can we go out and the people that are on the streets that don't know the Lord and share the gospel with them? What can we do? You see, when that's when you start finding purpose in your life. There are five reasons, five things, five purposes that a church comes together and what happens when we do. A church grows larger through evangelism. I'm going to talk about evangelism today a little bit. A church grows up spiritually through worship. Getting up, raising your hands, singing, dancing, praying is a form of worship. Living your life is worship, so you grow spiritually through worship. A church grows stronger through discipleship, and I'm going to talk about that more in just a minute here. Number four, a church grows faithful through ministry. When you're doing and not just being a hearer of the word, but doing it, your faith grows. And finally, a church grows closer to each other through fellowship. Those are the five things we're going to be talking about this entire series. So let's go ahead and get into each one of them. I'm going to give you an overview of these, and then we're going to get into evangelism a lot more next week. But it starts with how you came to church. Evangelism is how you are here today. Somebody evangelized to you. Now, some of you might say, well, nobody evangelized to me. I didn't go to a Billy Graham crusade. My parents just made me come. They evangelized. We're going to go learn about the Lord. You're going to come and you're going to get in that class and the teacher's going to tell you about the Lord. Somebody shared the gospel with you and you're here right now. So evangelism is important. And when a church evangelizes, they grow larger. Why do they grow larger? Because more people want to be saved. More people need to be saved. And when you're saved, you want to be around your brothers and sisters. Do you understand? So when you want to be around your brothers and sisters, you're going to look for a place to go and congregate, to go and fellowship with them, to be, live life together. Evangelism is sharing the gospel of Jesus at your home, at your work, in the world around you, and at church. Sharing the gospel with that. You might say, well, I don't know how to share this. You don't have to. Share with them what he's done in your life, who he is to you. You see, that's sharing the gospel. And if God has so given you a gift to teach it, then you can share what the word of God says. And if he's given you the ability or the gift to preach it, then you can preach what the word of God says. But you can share what God has done in your life to anybody who will listen. Can I get an amen? amen. Do you want to, though? See, when you do, you evangelize. And by preaching salvation through Christ and repentance, people get saved. You preach his mercy. We preach his forgiveness, turn away from your sin, people get saved. Look at what Romans chapter 10, verse 14, it says, but how can they call on him to save them unless they believe in him? And how can they believe in him if they have never heard about him? And how can they hear about him unless someone tells them? I've committed my life to telling people about the Lord. I hope that you commit your life to at least showing people who God is in your life. Can you do that? Because when you're doing that, you're evangelizing. 
Some people think street evangelism is me getting up with a bullhorn, you know, on a box and yelling out. Of course that is. That's part of it. Or maybe get on the street corner. Yes, for sure. But wearing these shirts like we see that we got on online telling people that the love of the Lord is for you. That's evangelizing. You're sharing who God is and what he's done in your life. You wouldn't wear this shirt if you didn't believe it. Listen, I'm an Astros fan. I'm not going to wear a Dodgers uniform. I'm not going to do it. But because I believe in Christ, I'm going to wear shirts that say that have scriptures, things that point you to Christ. So you'll do those things, right? That's evangelizing. Sitting with somebody and telling them, listen, this is the way to get over your depression, a way to get over your issues in life. The only way for you to be saved is to give your life to Jesus. And by the way, he forgives you, and he has mercy on you, and he loves you. You see, have you experienced those things? If you've experienced them, you can share them. You are evangelizing. And guess who needs to evangelize? The church. Look to your neighbor and say, it's up to me to evangelize. Now look to them and say, it's also up to you to evangelize. (laughs) It's up to us to evangelize Jesus and tell the world about who he is. And those who gladly receive that message of salvation, it leads to worshiping God. That's the second thing, right? And worshiping is singing. Yes, it's playing your music to him. It's praying. It's dancing. It's doing rituals. Like what kind of rituals? Communion together. Getting baptized together, which is something we're going to be doing next week, right? We have like half a dozen baptisms next week. Those are things that we're worshiping God through our actions. Isaiah 12, 5 says, sing to the Lord for he has done glorious things. Let this be known to all the world. Right there, all the world. Can all the world hear you singing? Can they? Can the Lord hear you singing when when we're Sunday morning singing? I hope so. Spiritually, right? I got to tell you, man, when we're sitting in here, I know how big the church is. I know how many it sits. But spiritually, when my eyes are closed, it feels somewhere between probably five, ten times bigger than what it is. That's spiritually singing, man. I believe the Lord can hear us, but let's really let him hear us. Let's let people, when they come in and visit, see, man, that this is a worshiping church, man. We want to sing to him. We want to pray to him. We want to dance and we want to live our life for him. Psalm 95, 6 says, come, let us bow down in worship and let us kneel before the Lord, our maker. You see, to worship like that means that you're making yourself a slave to God. Man, that means I'm going to do what you say, God. I'm going to learn about you and what your word says, and I'm going to follow what you say even if I don't want to. And that, brothers and sisters, is discipleship, learning what it is. Because when you worship God that way, right, when you evangelize and hear it being evangelized to you and you make yourself available by worshiping God, that leads you to discipleship. Discipleship is the third thing, and what that means is to study and learn Jesus' commands and how to do it. It's not just having head knowledge of what it says, but doing what it says. They go hand in hand, right? That's discipleship. Unless, if you don't do what it says, you're just a student. All you've gotten is knowledge, and it goes away with you when you die. But when you're a disciple, what you've passed on continues to live through the people that you've passed it on to when you disciple, right? So a church grows stronger through discipleship. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11, it says this. Now these are the gifts Christ gave to the church, apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, and the pastors and teachers. And their responsibility is to equip God's people to do his work and to build up the church, the body of Christ. God blessed us and provided us those gifts so that we can become disciples. You know, what we have here is uh, many of you guys are part of DS College of Ministry, and it's making disciples of the people that are part of that. It started off with two dozen. We're down to one and a half dozen folks right now that are faithfully coming and doing this, and it's going to continue to grow further and further. And plus, by the way, we're starting up again next January. Praise God for that. So if you missed your opportunity to be a part of DS College, and that's to learn how to let God lead you, uh, what it means to be a disciple and how to lead other people, man, then that's the college course for you. We could talk more about that in the future. But that's what's happening in DS College. And what you're seeing right now in Dayspring is a result of DS College. Us going out and doing the concerts. 
We got a concert on August 1st that's coming up, right? We're going to be at another place. Somebody's doing a CD release, and they saw our FCA video that we did two weeks ago, and they said, that's what we need to open up, our opening act. See, that's not me. That's God, right? Praise God. How does that happen? That happens because a church is evangelizing, because a church is worshiping, and because a church is becoming disciples. You are the church. This building can't be a disciple, but each person inside of here can be a disciple. Amen? Amen. Amen. Praise God. See, so God provided these gifts, so now it's up to us to use these gifts. It's up to us to use them in ministry, which is the fourth thing, right? And ministry is this. It's serving. It's doing God's work in this world and doing it with love. That's what ministry is, okay? So where you put, uh, it's where you put your actions into what you believe, into what you've learned and what you're passionate about. So what you believe, what you've learned, and what you're passionate about, when you put action behind it, that's ministry. Because you're doing it for God. So it's where you start fulfilling your destiny. It's also where you start fulfilling your purpose in life. Romans chapter 12, verse 10, it says this, love each other with genuine affection and take delight in honoring each other. Never be lazy, but work hard and serve the Lord enthusiastically. Rejoice in our confident hope. Be patient in trouble and keep on praying. When God's people are in need, be ready to help them. Always be eager to practice hospitality. Romans chapter 12, verse 10 through 13. It's beautiful right there. Service, right? Doing ministry. And it's up to the church to do it. And we want to do it together. I've I said this many times, but specifically to the leadership, I, don't, I can't do everything at the church. And I don't want to. And I wasn't created to do everything at the church. I remember when we first started um, the church, probably in the first year or two, I would hear pretty regularly, your church, your church. People will say that to me, your church. But it's not my church. I am a part of the church. I am not the church. And after people started realizing that and getting it, that, hey, this is my church, we started seeing things happen. They took ownership of stuff. We see people building things, right? We see people building stuff like this, painting and decorating and doing this inside and outside of the church walls. They're taking care of the temple, but then they're saying, hey, I'd like to go and do this for the seniors. I'd like to go do this for the orphanage. Can we do this? Can we do that? See, so people start seeing it as their church. We want to do things together. I don't like to do things by myself. Sometimes there are things I want to do by myself, and I'm sure you're like that. But for the most part, if we're going out and doing a great work for God, man, let's get some other people around us so we can, they can also experience this great work. You see, that leads to fellowship which is the fifth thing that a church, this purpose is supposed to be. Fellowship. That's where believers get together to do the Great Commission. Very simple. We get together to fulfill the Great Commission, to go out, right, to make disciples in all nations, baptizing them and teaching them all the things that the Lord has taught us to do. That's what this is in fellowship. So listen to this in Acts chapter 2, verse 42 through 47. Man, this is a beautiful beautiful picture and illustration of fellowship this is really truly great all the believers devoted themselves now i'm sorry before that what was happening before this peter was preaching and it was convicting those people who were hearing him he was preaching about listen you crucified jesus okay he's telling them this he died for your sins and mine and so now it goes right here verse 42 all the believers devoted themselves to the apostles teachings and to fellowship and to sharing meals, including the Lord's Supper, and to prayer. A deep sense of awe. Man, that's like deep, right? A conviction. You're feeling it. A deep sense of awe came over all of them. And the apostles performed many miracles, signs, and wonders. Verse 44. And all the believers met together in one place and shared everything they had. You getting a picture of this now? They're all coming together, meeting one place, and sharing, sharing, sharing. Do you like to share what you have? I'm not just talking about your food and your money, but do you like to share your food? Do you like to share your life? Do you like to share your heart and your faith with other people? This is all the things that they're sharing. Verse 45, they sold their property and possessions and shared the money with those in need. They worshiped together in the temple each day, met in the homes for the Lord's Supper, 
and shared their meals with great joy and generosity, all the while praising God and enjoying the goodwill of all the people. And listen to this. Each day the Lord added to their fellowship those who were being saved. A picture of the church. Dayspring, we're, we were built on the foundation of Jesus Christ. And I can't even count how many times I said, if you want to see where we are in the history of, you know, our, of our church, just go and read Acts chapters 2 through 4. Because we're the early part of the church. That's what we were doing. This is what we did so much of. And we did all of this so that we could share the love of Christ throughout the entire world. So that we could do the Great Commission. We didn't know how it was going to happen or where it was going to happen or exactly when these or that or all these things were going to happen. But what we knew was that we loved the Lord and we were following him and we were listening to what he had to say. You see, when you look at the church, sometimes we can look at it as a social gathering. I'm just going to get together, check my Christian card today, my church card, and boom, I'm going to go live my life Monday through Saturday. That's not the life of a true believer. That's not a real fellowship. But I'm going to tell you what I've seen in the history of this church is people getting together outside of the walls of the church. People calling each other and praying for each other and helping each other. People staying around. I mean, the fellowship last week after our uh, 4th of July celebration, people were here. They didn't want to leave. That's fellowship. That's people that, can, that love each other or like each other enough to stay around each other, right? But that's fellowship. We can't manufacture that. I can't force people to do it. They either do it or they don't. And if they do it, it's because they feel the presence of the Lord. If they feel the presence of the Lord, he's the one that's bringing them together, then he will do great things inside of you. I've seen friendships formed within this church, relationships formed. I've seen families begin here at this church, and it's been an amazing thing. So when I look at it and say, well, church is not just a nice place that we go to. Sometimes, you know, we look at church many different ways, but... I will tell you, the, crew, the church, it is a cruise ship, but it's also a battleship. So we come together, and we relax, and we have fun, and we build each other up, but then when it's time to fight, we're also a battleship. The church is a cargo ship, carries things from place to place, place but it's also a fishing ship where it goes and gets other people to bring them in as part of the church. And that's what we are, Right? We're a cruise ship and a battleship. We're a cargo ship and a fishing ship. We're doing all of these things. That's part of the church. And it started many, many years ago. I'm going to go ahead and ask the board members to come up here so we can make our big announcement to you guys. The faithful church evangelizes. It worships daily. It makes disciples and it does ministry. It has fellowship with each and every person that walks through these doors here a little bit closer so brothers and sisters what this does is this leads us to our next steps in our faith so many um, many years ago when I told you guys I didn't think about becoming a pastor didn't think about starting a church I had to submit to the Lord after seeking for two years trying to find hey what's God what do you want me to do because I really enjoy serving, and I really enjoy being around other people. I remember I was going to a big church at the time. I used to look at their job postings, and I thought, maybe I could just apply at a job and run the computer department or manage a, a department, you know, or something. Or I could work for a pastor. And over the years, I was seeking this, and what does God want me to do for him He's, when he discovered it's to become a pastor? So then seven years go by, or a few years go by, and it was around seven or eight years ago, as we started this church, and we were in the first place that we were at, the Lord gave me a vision. And in that vision, I've only shared most of it, actually all of it with my wife, and I've shared most of it with a few of the people here that are here, Lisa, Joe, Gio, Adrian, some of the people, the the original members of the church, on what the vision was. And the reason I didn't share all of it at that time, because even to me, it was kind of fuzzy, it was blurry, but it seemed huge. And I was like, okay, God, is this for my glory or for your glory? And so for years, I'd ask God, and I'd just, he'd tell me, put it aside. He goes, the vision's there, just, it's not going nowhere, just keep loving me and loving the people I send you. I said, okay. And every time I would look up and think about that, I would look and the vision would get more clear. 
It's like one of those pictures you look at, right? From far away, it looks a certain way, but as you're walking, it gets more clear and more clear. Finally, the time has come where it's getting clear enough for us to start moving. Greater things are inside of you because the Holy Spirit is inside of you. And you are dayspring. Peter's not. The building is not. You are dayspring. Look to your neighbor and say, you are dayspring. Listen to what Jesus says right here in Luke chapter 16, verse 9. I want you to close your eyes for a moment, just for a moment, and listen to these words. And think about yourself here. Here's the lesson that the Lord is teaching us about the shrewd manager he was talking about. He says, use your worldly resources to benefit others and make friends. Then when your possessions are gone, they will welcome you to an eternal home. If you are faithful in the little things, you will be faithful in the large ones. But if you are dishonest in the little things, you won't be honest with greater responsibilities. You can look at me again. I believe that we've been faithful in the little things that the Lord has given us here. I'm going to start showing this video slide. Um, if uh, Y'all can see. I want you all to see some of the beginnings of the church. So if you can go ahead and start playing that here. As one of our first family nights and Bible studies. Look at that. How many people there? <laughs> that was probably our first VBS. <laughs> one of our first outreaches, Cypress Assistance Ministries. We're going out and helping the food pantry. This is our women's ministry. This is a senior home that we're going to be visiting next uh, week right here. Here we are. Singing to them. We're, that's our men, mighty men of action, right? It's our first men's retreat, right? We're going out and doing these things right here. Look at these guys, man. Of course, we had a wedding of one of our sons and daughters here, Gio and Gabby. He proposed to her on one of our family nights, and there they are getting married right there. And we're going to stop this right here. This is one of the early photos of our church right after the flood. I can tell you there was a flood because right here was a drum set, and we have a curtain blocking it all off, and it's a brand new thing. So this is one of our first anniversary pictures. Now, as I look at that, I got to tell you, it's been exciting to see all of this. It's been exciting to see all the people and the faces that have changed over the years. There's been times where that, if I showed y'all last or two years ago's anniversary picture, I mean, Joe was telling me the stage wasn't built to hold this many people. It was huge. I mean, it was huge. You couldn't see anybody. It would just be a bunch of little dots, right? But at one time, that's what God was bringing here, and God's building that back up again. So then I go back to the vision. So what was this vision? This vision, the Lord told me that people are going to come to this church to be saved, that people were going to come to this church for healing, for refuge, that people were going to grow up in this church and lead ministries within Dayspring and outside of Dayspring. He told me that we were going to reach the community and the world. These are the things that he was sharing with me. He told me we were going to have a community center where people could come and families could come on a Friday and Saturday night and have fun together and go bowling and playing games and doing things like this. He told me we were going to have a place, that the, we were going to have a building that would be big enough for people to celebrate quinceañeras, to celebrate weddings, to celebrate these big events in their lives because it was a family church. It's going to be a family community. And then he showed me this vision, and I'll never forget how it looked. I was walking. I saw the building in the back, and I, here it was. I was walking from the back of the parking lot, and there were all types and all colors and all shapes and sizes of people walking into the church. And as I look around, there's all shapes, all sizes, all colors of people here now. All shapes, all colors, all sizes of people there, right? People with different backgrounds. And I saw that, and I said, wow, Lord. And so, man, I tell you, when we look at this, I believe that we were faithful with the small things. 
you know, this church here, it's served, this building, this church building has served its, its purpose. I mean, it's allowed us to grow. It's allowed us to overcome and to be faithful. We've been faithful through the two storms. We talked about this, right? We've had yard sales in here where this place was stacked with stuff and, and so much work. And there's so many things that have happened in here. We've had daddy-daughter dances in here. We've had I don't know how many weddings in this place right here. We've it just, it's been so many beautiful things. But the time is, the Lord is saying it's time to do greater things. Greater days are ahead. Yes, praise God. So we're excited and we're ready to go do these great things for God. But in order to do that, we need our own place. We do. We need to, uh, to build a family community center, a worship center to worship the Lord, an elementary school. <laughs> With some of the top-notch teachers from a certain district that we won't mention that are ready to pour, to teach these kids, but also to make disciples to go out and change this world. We're going to continue. We need a place for the College of Ministry. That's where the equipping of the saints is going to be, where we're going to teach the people to go out and do ministry. A sports center is something that the Lord gave me. And I was like, how does that look? And I'm like, what is a sports center? That, and that's where these basketball and indoor soccer and volleyball can come together and people can come in and feel the presence of the Lord and hopefully leave wanting to know who God is. And a place to have big events, to do things. Whatever God has given us to do, fall festivals, to do whatever, gather other churches together, man. And as great as this place is and it has been for us, it just can't accommodate the vision. God says, don't box me in. He showed me, don't box me in. I was thinking, well, this, will this work? And he's like, don't box me in. He goes, don't worry about that. He goes, just do what I'm telling you to do. So I'm going to get back to this. I'm going to introduce these board members in case you don't know who they are. So then why do we exist? To preach the gospel. It's not just to have a fancy place and a good-looking place. I'm, you don't know me. I'm more, it's about functional rather than fancy, okay? Fancy is okay, but I'd rather have functional, right? I don't need to go to Gucci if I can go get it from Great Valley, right? You got me? That's me. Okay. <laughs> but it's to preach the gospel. It's to give. We give to help people that are in need within the church and outside of the community, which we're doing right now. It's to serve other people, to do, to do what Jesus did for us. He said, I wash these feet, now you go and do likewise, is what he said. It's to help people get baptized so they can wash, their, they can have the symbols of washing their sins away and have communion so they can share communion with God, so they can experience these things. This is the purpose of having this church, to worship God. Praying to him, singing to him, learning how to live our life and doing it to become disciples, right? To follow him, to learn what his word says and then going out and doing it. To pray together, having prayer night visuals and having maybe big community or citywide prayers gatherings. To fellowship, to come together, to learn new friends. Maybe relationships are going to be formed and marriages are going to happen. And families will be born and we'll be doing baby dedications and baptisms along with wedding ceremonies. I mean, all those things will be fantastic, right? And finally, it's to save souls. We have to keep those things in focus. I have to. I know my mind, and I'm asking you guys to help me with all of this. But those are greater things. We've done those on a smaller scale. We're not looking down on the small things. We rejoice in the small beginnings, right? But God has trusted us with little. We clean up this place. We take care of this place. I know that the owner is very thankful and grateful that we are here doing this. We do take good care of it. And so because of that, God is going to reward our faithfulness with greater things. So let me tell you guys. Let me get you all, uh, introduce you all to the board members. In case you all don't know what the board is. The board is, that means that I'm not the one who only runs the church. Okay? I can get outvoted. And I do. By these guys on things. Okay? <laughs> Spiritually, I'm, I'm, I've got that. But then when it comes to the business of the church, when it comes to the direction of the church and what's happening sometimes within the church and different ministries, we go through a board. And contrary to belief, my wife does not agree with everything that I say. <laughs> Matter of fact, she's probably the one that's most vocal against what I say, and that's fine. 
So we have, we have uh, Michelle, of course, being a pastor here, but her heart is deep and for everybody that's here, so she's on the board. We have Lisa, who's been with us from the very beginning, a servant's heart, right? You want to see what a servant is and a helper, you see Lisa. And then we have Joe over here, who's been with us also from the very beginning, right? This man is about the evangelism and the apostleship to going out of the church and spreading the gospel. So I'm going to let them talk for just a minute. They have some things in their heart that they want to share about this vision and about where we're going as a church. Go ahead, Joe. Push the button there. Push it and hold it for a second. There you go. Well, first of all, it, it gives me great joy to be here with everybody today. I mean, I, it's always a you know, joy for us to come and visit um, well, of course, you know, you guys know that about a year ago, we, you know, we decided to move and we, uh, we, we answered our purpose and our calling to go do some great things for God's kingdom. And, um, but in doing that, we didn't lose our contact with, with Dayspring because this is our church. This is our home. Yeah, and man. pastor's my best friend. Pastoras are, you know, are the best pastora ever, you know, so then we can't leave this church. So, <laughs> um, and then we have Lisa here. You know, you, got, you know, Lisa, she brings, she's kind of like the glue, you know. We, we, look, we look for her for everything. You know, Pastor knows that it, something needs to get done. He goes to Lisa. And so, um, you know, she's the glue for everything. So then uh, we all have a function uh, within this church. My function, well, you guys don't see it. You know, you, I mean, you guys are up, up here praising, worshiping. You know, you, you know we all, we're a big body, right? In First Corinthians, it talks about the body of Christ. We all have a different function. So then uh, my function uh, before I left was... Hey, I'm the one that got everything fixed around here. And so the pastor would say, hey, Joe, I need this fixed. I'll fix it. I need this done. I, I would do it. But I think, but it was bigger than that, though. I mean, he, you know, uh, as, as a board, we come together spiritually, and then we make decisions um, based on what the Lord has in our heart. And so we don't do anything without that. You know, uh, we have to have that spiritual connection and that vision, and we all have to share that same vision because then we know that it comes from Christ. And so... Uh, so in, that, in doing that, uh, it's been an honor for me because uh, when I first uh, became a board member, I, I, I didn't know what to do. I said, man, I'm, I'm not equipped for it. I don't, I don't have the credentials. And, and, and Pastor said, don't worry about that. God has revealed to me that you're the one that should be on, on the board. So then ever since, it's been, it's been an honor for me. But, it, but even, so, even deeper than that, though, uh, you know, uh, we have shared the same vision uh, seven years ago. Um, I think it was a little f uh, longer, than, uh, further back than that, Pastor. We're talking about before, you know, the, before we were even in the church. Uh, we were, we were, uh, Pastor and I were meeting, and we would go out to, you know, this Canyon Lake. You guys are, have you heard of that? Then uh, that's where I'm staying out, out there in San Antonio and in, in Canyon Lake area. And we would go up there, and, and uh, I had this piece of property, and we would go up there, and, and we, and, and uh, Pastor at that moment, uh, me at that time, he was, uh, you know, just he was counseling me. He was uh, I needed counsel and I needed a uh, I was lost and and so at that time he was he was helping me with that. And but when I found the Lord, man, I ran to him, and I I gave all you know glory to God, but I also thank Pastor for that, for showing me. You know, I always call him the Great Compass. <laughs> he showed me where to go, so I I ran towards that way. And so, um, but you know, after we after I found the Lord, I was t I told Pastor, you know. A few, a few months ago, or about a month ago, I said, you know what, there's something going on here. I mean, I, God revealed to me that this is going to come full circle because there's, there's a connection between me finding the Lord around that time period, and, that's, and that was the same time period, you guys, we all decided to, to start a church. So there's a connection there. I said, um, I know that as long as I'm part of this church and I know as long as uh, the church is in existence that I have a purpose, my family has a purpose, that we are to work. You know, um, I, had, I, I would like to think that if there's a body, I mean, the, the body of the Christ, that God has used me and my family in to, to, to do the work, to, to do the work you guys don't see. We use my hands, you know, and everybody has their own, uh, their, their own function as part of the body. So, and in these, in these past years, you know, uh, you know um, I've learned what labor is all about. <laughs> I've always been a guy that worked in the office, and I said, well, you know, I'm going to work in the office, and that's where I'm, that's I'm going to be the rest of my life. No, he had a different plan for me. So, and he taught me, he taught me, he taught my family what it is to labor and, and the, grat the gratification behind labor. Most people see, man, I'm not going to go labor. That's, that's, for, that's for people who uh, don't have an education. No, you're wrong. Labor actually is, where the place, is, is a place where I find God. If I'm under the sun, 
and it's 100 degrees, that's where I want to be because I know I found the Lord there. I'm, I'm in spiritual connection with him the entire time. I'm, I'm, I'm suffering, I'm sweating, I'm thirsty, but then that's where I find him. That's the best place to be. So in that, he's, you know, he's allowed, well, I've allowed myself to be used in that way where I can share my spiritual uh, connection with God and I share my, all my spiritual, uh, um, um, you know, all my, um, my, you know, all the intervention, all the, uh, uh, the connections that I have with the Lord, I share that with pastor and then with the board members. And we've been talking these past few years. We talk about, you know, what if we had a church and, you know, what, what, what vision did we have? You know, the vision is greater than we can even imagine. Uh, you know, think about, think about what your plans are and, or think about what, you know, and you think that what your plans are, are, or what God has planned for you and you're understanding what God has planned for you. Now magnify that a hundred times that those are God's plans. So then when we were, so then back years ago, you know, Pastor and I sat down, man, we, we want to have a church. We want to have so many acres and we want to do this. We want to do that. And then, uh, you know, that, that vision is much larger than we were talking about the, a few years back. <laughs> uh, we were talking about just having a, a gymnasium, a sanctuary, and a few classes outside for Sunday school. No, we're talking about an actual school for kids, you know. And I don't know how many grades, uh, what was the vision for the kids? five. Huh? K through five. K through five. And then we're talking about a university. And then we're talking about a gymnasium for, for, for the youth. Uh, we're talking about even uh, leagues, right? Uh, uh, didn't you say something about uh, sports leagues and stuff like that? You know, the dream is bigger. And but all the, you know, it didn't matter how much, how big the dream is, you know, I mean, uh, unfortunately, <clears throat> to, to make those dreams come true, we're going to need finances. We're going to need money. And it takes money to do these kind of things. And unfortunately, but we know with God, what? You guys have been uh, listening to this. Everything is possible. Yes. <laughs> and, yeah. And, and so, so then as board members, we come together. <laughs> we come together. We pray on these things. We counsel each other. We, we share the vision. And we also use our discernment to go the right direction. And that's what we do. And that's our, that, that's our function. It's to make sure that the church, are make, the church is making the right decisions, and God uses every one of us. Amen. Um, and so then, um, and he's, he's uh, actually gave us a vision that, you know what, it's going to take you guys anywhere from one and a half to two million dollars to get this church going. And that's a lot of money. And that's a lot of money. Uh, and he's also gave us a vision and saying, well, there's no point of you guys looking for a church if you're not ready to get a church. And how do we get ready? Well, we have to raise money. And, um, and, it's, and, uh, and there is also a number for that. It's gonna take anywhere from um, 3 million, I'm sorry, 300,000 to 400,000 as a down payment uh, to get a church, to get a loan. We're not gonna put limits on that because we know God will come through. He, he may just give us all 2 million. <laughs> and so that's just the way the Lord works, yeah, right? Praise God. And so, uh, and so when, <laughs> amen. <laughs> but without a starting point, without actually doing something, putting action behind it, we're just talking. We just you no, know, and we're not talkers here. We're doers. Amen. And we're doers of the word. And so, and I and I know that uh, for a fact because I know everyone here. You know, uh, and so for us to get to that point and to make that a reality, we got to start somewhere. And we have some ideas and we, that we would like to share with you guys in the future. But great things. Uh, we're gonna briefly tell you what, what we're trying to do, or briefly, uh, you know, you know, announce what what our next step is. But we have some great ideas and great things coming soon. And um, I don't want to take all the time, but uh, I just want and I'm just want to let you guys know that uh, great things are coming, and I'm happy to be up here to see everyone today. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Joe. Um, it's an honor to be able to serve on the board and be a part of this um, church from the beginning. Um, and just watching it grow over the years has been a, um, just very rewarding. Watching our children grow up, um, the little ones uh, that were up there now are, you know, some of them are seniors now. So it's, it's amazing to watch them grow up. 
But to serve more children, we're going to need a bigger place to be able to serve the children that are coming, the families that are coming, the um, families that are starting. They're going to have children, so we need a place to be able to serve them. And with the school, that's even going to be greater. But just thinking about even VBS, we're kind of tight and limited on space right now. <clears throat> but with a bigger place, we can do so much more for the glory of God. So we... Um, we just know that the great things are coming and that all things are possible and we can't do this alone we need every part of day spring to be a part of this journey that we are on because it takes each one of us god has a purpose for each one of us to, and why we're here and he has a plan that we cannot even imagine we have a vision but the vision's b bigger than what we can see Okay. Hi, sisters and brothers. Yes. So in Joshua 1, 9, it says, Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. So when God puts something in your heart, we have a choice. We can decide that we're going to... Oh, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> we can decide if we're going to obey God or we can decide that we're gonna run and be fearful. And so when God puts something in our heart, we wanna obey. Even though it might be hard, even though it might be scary, even though it might be new, we want to be uh, faithful servants of God that obeys. And so when God puts a dream in your heart, he's asking you to be willing have a willing heart, have a willing mind, have a willing uh, spirit to carry out his plans. Because he can do all things, Amen. but he needs us to do the work, right? So we can decide to just be comfortable, or we can decide to do something great for God's kingdom. Amen. Not for us, for God. And so it starts with, it's gotta start somewhere, right? We can't, does, these things don't just happen from nowhere. It starts with a decision and it starts with action. And so we're just so thankful that God is trusting Dayspring, which is everybody here and those that are not here today and those that will come to be able to um, provide something similar to this, to be able to serve um, our brothers and sisters in Christ and the lost that don't know who he is. So, praise God. Amen. Thank you, guys. Amen. Praise God. Just hold that. So, we're just giving you all some ideas of what this place could look like. Put those pictures back up of the church and scroll them through. I mean, yes, it's a beautiful place. We wanted to have a, so this is the real church, is the people. But sanctuary like this, right? Big place to do our plays. We haven't done our plays, our Easter plays in a long time. To sit enough people, baptistry, sound booths, I mean, high ceilings, right? All this good stuff, right, for sound and lighting. Windows, I want windows. Joe, Joe's our builder. I want windows there. It'd be great. Something like that on the outside, right? It'd be nice. Maybe something like the other one. Maybe something like that, too, with a carport. I mean, the possibilities are endless. But you are part of that. Can you put one of those back up on the screen and pause it, please? Let's just do the last one. Anyway, they'll get to it in just a second. To do this, yes, Joe said, involves uh, finances. I wish we could trade chickens for bricks, but we can't, okay? I wish we could. I have a whole bunch, right? We could find a whole bunch of chickens, and here, give me this. I, give me some lumber, and I'll give you chickens. That didn't happen. It takes prayer. Brothers and sisters, we need you all to pray with us and joining in prayer. Pray over each other. Pray that the Lord will open up the right place for us at the right time, wherever that is. I don't know what that is, but something. Um, maybe I'm over my limit here. It's going to require sacrifice on our part. You know, whatever that is in your eyes and whatever the sacrifice is and whatever the time is, it's going to require time for us. Is that me? Okay. Um, you know me. I'm like that dog from up. Squirrel. So uh, time, it's going to require focus on us, on our part, to fulfill the Great Commission. And the first step is always the hardest step. We're about to close right now. And today is our first step of faith, right? Yeah. 
it's our time right now to start this new chapter in our lives, to leave a legacy, to fulfill this great commission. Day Spring will be here long after we are gone. It is built on the foundation of Jesus Christ, so it will not crumble. It will not go away. Will you join us and be a part of the future of Dayspring? Give a hand clap to the Lord. Praise God. Yes. Yeah, excitement. All right. <laughs> yes. Amen. So last announcement for tonight, and we get going. On July the 30th, we're going to have, and I'll send out the meeting and give the time uh, next week, but on July the 30th, we're going to have an information meeting here at the church. If you want to know what more we're going to do and how you can help to make this happen, then come and join us, and we'll give you all more details at that time, okay? So God bless you guys. Let's go out to the Lord. Let's close out in prayer like we always need to. Whew. Thank you, Father God, for this beautiful day, Lord, and for the excitement, Father God, the joy that's filling this room, Lord. Some people may be nervous, Father God. Some people may not say, well, I don't know how we're going to do this. Neither do I, but God knows how we're going to do this. So I'm thankful and I'm excited because I trust in him and my faith is in him. Our faith, Lord God, needs to be on you and you alone, Father. We can't see it with our human eyes, but with our spiritual eyes, we can feel it and we can see it, Father. So we submit to your will. We submit to your glory, Father God. We submit to your name and to your word. Thank you, Father, for loving us the way that you do. I pray for blessings over each person today. I pray that people can walk out of here with their heads held high, their shoulders back, knowing that they are a child of God. Thank you, Father, for making a way for us, Lord. Thank you that you will get, bring ideas to people, that they will be creative, Father, that they will do the work, Father, that you have given us to do, Lord, to make this happen, to share the gospel, to save souls is our priority, Father God, not to save them ourselves, but to point them to you, Father. We cannot lose focus of that. That is the focus, Lord, whether it's here, whether it's in a big building, whether it's out in a tent, Lord God, I know that you will be there with us, and so we can't be wrong if you're with us, Lord. So, Father, I thank you, God, that you give us everything that we need. Lord Jesus. I thank you for the people that are here. I thank you for the vision and the direction that we're heading in. Thank you, Lord, for loving us the way that you do. It's in Jesus' mighty name we believe. Amen. Amen. Praise God.